Hey everyone, Crisis here. The Justice League is by far the most iconic and powerful collection of comic book superheroes, especially in my book. Despite many of their members natively boasting godlike strength, almost each of them have, at one point or another, been empowered to even greater heights, either through merging with other characters or having their powers and abilities amplified by higher forms of energy. We've been shown time and time again that there are states of being far beyond those we most typically associate with any one leaguer. So with that said, today we'll be delving into these super forms and ranking them from least to most powerful. Seeing as the league's roster has varied wildly over the years, we'll start with the first or most classic lineup, that being Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Martian Manhunter, Barry Allen's Flash, and Hal Jordan Green Lantern. Let me know down in the comments if you'd like a future video analyzing the likes of Wally West or Jon Stewart or any other once and future member of the team. For now though, we'll stick to the OGs. Also, as a citation, each character on this list could very well warrant an entire video dedicated to them alone. These concepts and storylines are so vast that I can only go so far as to describe the intricacies therein for the sake of a ranking video. So again, let me know if you'd want any idea explored here to be further expanded upon on a later date. I'll be providing the general power scaling and summaries of the plot surrounding these transformations, just enough for the average comic book reader to grasp the power hierarchy. Also, to make it more clear, I'll only be considering the main continuity comic Justice League, so no Elseworlds alternate reality transformations that these characters may have undergone. No video games, films, or television shows either. This is DC Comics. It's worth noting as well that in rare instances, these characters have actually surpassed the power of these amps through training or experience with their base forms, just like how base Goku in Dragon Ball Super is stronger than his Super Saiyan three form at the time of DBZ, to use a maybe pretty familiar example when it comes to typical power scaling. Where it's the case, I'll make those instances known. That said, I want this video to be more than just ranking the standard Justice League members, plus Martian Manhunter getting stronger than ever while in his normal state isn't a transformation after all. So with the preamble behind us, let's analyze the feats and begin this breakdown. Starting with JLA 2003, numbers 84 through 89, we learn a new facet of ancient Martian lore that would soon apply to the Manhunter from Mars. Eons ago, the primordial ancestors of the Martian race were known as Burning Martians, extremely powerful and bloodthirsty beings, so much so that they drew the attention of the Guardians of the Universe of Green Lantern notoriety. Feeling the urge to genetically engineer the Burning Martians into a more docile form as to avoid the devastation devastation they'd likely spread across the cosmos, these qualities and personality would lay dormant within the Martians. This would as well be the case for John Jones, who by the early 2000s especially, was already considered the most powerful and dangerous being on Earth, even in the words of Superman. Over the course of these issues, this dormant power would be unlocked within Manhunter, unleashing the persona of Furnace. Acting on his newfound malevolence, he pretty much bullies the entire Justice League. Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Wally West are all either mentally dominated, physically overpowered, or phased into solid matter. As is the case with Superman, who is just straight up shifted into a table, sending him into shock. Just prior to this as well, Manhunter managed to mentally manipulate all of of Arkham Asylum into feeling utter remorse, even a mind as warped as the Joker, and even force staunch political rivals into diplomacy, all with his mental abilities. His power grows to the point that he could single-handedly bully the entire League. If it wasn't for the remnant of John's persona reclaiming his body from his burning counterpart, it's likely that the Guardian's fears, and then some, would come to pass. And this speaks to the level of power we're talking about here. If the lowest character on this ranking is already capable of soloing some of the most powerful DC heroes all by himself. Fast forwarding to Scott Snyder's Justice League 2018, issues 24 and 25, we see the most powerful Batsuit ever devised. The final Batsuit was constructed out of Element X, a metal previously harnessed by various new gods within some of their most versatile technologies. The suit was crafted by a potential future version of the Dark Knight designed to alter his teammates down to a cellular and mental level if they swayed from his vision of an ideal 
ideal future. The main timeline Batman then pilots the armor, using it to combat the 2019 era versions of the Justice League, sans Superman who was preoccupied. The final Batsuit was seen clashing with Wonder Woman and Hawkgirl, restraining Barry Allen and Jon Stewart, and knocking away Martian Manhunter, all while holding back and holding out hope of Superman arriving and sorting out the whole issue. At the very least, the final Batsuit would be above Furnace by default, seeing as it was able to pretty much solo a much more experienced and powerful version of the League compared to themselves from about 15 years prior, publication-wise. Manhunter specifically has stated to have grown more powerful than Furnace in the years following his transformation, so the final Batsuit scaling to a much stronger Ja'on puts him above the Burning Martian directly. The fight here would have ended far sooner as well if Bruce desired, as he went out of his way to withhold the suit's greater abilities against his friends and allies. With Element X's full potential, it could rank much higher, however this material is limited by one's imagination at the end of the day. With Bruce ultimately going only as far as making a big suit that wasn't just outright capable of tanking every conceivable attack from his teammates, even the much weaker nth metal within Hot Girl's mace. So if Bruce was able to master Element X and use it to its maximum, he'd be far higher, but insofar as essentially the ultimate Justice Buster suit, this is where the final bat suit goes. In the 2015 to 2016 event Darkseid War, we see that within the wake of Darkseid's death, many Justice League heroes became endowed with the powers of various new gods, one of them being Barry Allen's Flash. During the fight between the Anti-Monitor and Darkseid, the latter would summon the new god Black Racer, with the former then fusing Flash to the Ambassador of Death. With the power of the Black Racer combined with the Speed Force, Flash would be capable of slashing Anti-Monitor level beings, and even even killing Darkseid outright. This version of Darkseid had been growing in power since his arrival in the New 52, wherein the League barely forced him back to Apocalypse. The Black Racer is the embodiment of death for the New Gods. When their time comes, he simply can't be stopped, and it would appear that he is this powerful outright as the Anti-Monitor bent his will towards killing Darkseid. It wasn't that his time had come or anything, the Black Racer is simply that strong. While Furnace in the final Batsuit have managed to fight off the Justice League, Darkseid is a greater threat than this most of the time, usually requiring stronger versions of Superman to contend with. Keep in mind that Darkseid was nerfed between Final Crisis and Justice League Odyssey, which would account for Justice League New 52 Volume 1, with pieces of his being having been shattered by the Song of the Multiverse during events prior. This would also apply to Black Racer's feet in Darkseid War, to be fair. However, like I said, he should just outright be capable of bringing death to any new god across time, including High Father. Given his purpose in the hierarchy of the new gods, and the fact that those living in the god sphere have never been rebooted, it would stand to reason that Barry Allen here would be capable of defeating the likes of High Father, a being rivaling Darkseid throughout nearly the entirety of DC's history. This one is sure to be a shock for many, however, in the pages of Aquaman 2003, the King of Atlantis gets an insane metaphysical power boost. After having lost his hand, using a hook for a while, Arthur Curry encounters a magical Lady of the Lake originating from Arthurian legend. In the context of the DC Universe, however, this entity channels her magical abilities from the Secret Sea, a realm wherein all ideas, imagination, and memories of every individual resides, a place of pure energy wherein sorcery is irrelevant. While being limited to this comic run, the description of the Secret Sea matches that of the collective unconscious. In DC, the act of imagination is one of the most potent sources of power, with the existence of heroes, places, and even gods all being dependent on enough individuals believing in them. For example, if, for whatever reason, everyone on the planet believed an event in the past to have taken place, reality would not just eventually warp as to make that event have happened, but to have always happened, a total retroactive alteration of reality. We're shown in Justice League Dark Volume 2 that even the nature of the old and new gods are subject to the collective unconscious, with the deity Hecate manipulating the memories of the populace to maintain a certain timeline of events. Even the presence was essentially killed via having people's belief in him removed during the Eclipso arc in JLA. This is the level of power that the Secret Sea, Lady of the Lake, 
And finally, by extension, Aquaman here possesses through his role as the Water Bearer. While being instructed to use this power to heal, once Arthur channels the potency of the water in combat, he sets the stage for his battle with Merlin. The powerful Mage of Myth is shown literally consuming portions of the Secret Sea, eventually combining with Aquaman to unlock the full strength of the Water Bearer mantle. In this form in particular, if we correlate the Secret Sea to the Collective Unconscious, Aquaman would wield greater power than gods such as Zeus or Highfather, seeing as it's the collective unconscious which gives them life, and most likely even the Black Racer, and therefore God of Death Flash directly, as he too would fall under a deity whose existence is contingent on people's beliefs. However, beyond this, he never achieves this form again. The Water Hand itself doesn't just make him this powerful outright. Only when fused with Merlin has he achieved such heights. Hal Jordan, when possessed by the entity of fear, Parallax, and when channeling the power seen in Zero Hour, would at the bare minimum scale above Anti-Monitor as seen in Crisis on Infinite Earths. This being due to the fact that he not only boasted his own godlike power, but he'd also absorbed energy from said event. All of this accumulated to the point that Parallax could collapse multiple timelines together and erase them, including the entirety of the new gods with Metron noting as much, and and seemingly being erased himself, as he simply stops appearing at a certain point during all of this destruction. He even went to Apocalypse prior in hopes of enlisting Darkseid, meaning he believed the villain would too end up erased, wherein he evidently was. In Crisis on Infinite Earths, the Anti-Monitor's energy as well posed a threat to Darkseid and the God Sphere, with the ruler of Apocalypse admitting that the Monitor could destroy his world, pretty much conceding that he'd only win against a weakened anti-monitor, choosing to instead cloak apocalypse rather than intervene. This would place peak parallax above the entirety of the new gods, Justice League, and so on. In addition to this, during the events of Convergence, wherein a select number of heroes are sent back to the events of Crisis on Infinite Earths, beating the Anti-Monitor and preventing the Infinite Universes from being destroyed, we see Parallax literally pushing against the same Anti-Matter wave that would have erased pretty much everything. The fear possessed Hal Jordan's specific placement above the likes of Water Bear Aquaman is founded on his superiority over the Crisis on Infinite Earths Anti-Monitor, with Snyder's Justice League run showing us the two brothers of said being, with one of them, known as the World Forger, using the Collective Unconscious and therefore the Secret Sea as simply one tool with which he crafts realities. The Anti-Monitor would be roughly equal to his brother, the World Forger, so Parallax himself would in turn scale above the imagination hosting realm of the Secret Sea. Around here is where one could potentially place Martian Manhunter in the form of Apex Lex, as Luthor did absorb the powers of Ja'on to somewhat achieve this state. However, Lex is an arguably the dominant personality among their fusion, so it's a bit iffy. This is per the fact that the pretty much boss of the Anti-Monitor and his brothers believed Apex Lex to be capable of defeating their combined power. So if you're a big fan of Manhunter like I am, and are okay with considering Apex Lex a form of the guy, here you go. Making our way back to the Trinity, Dark Knight's Death Metal saw Wonder Woman absorb connective or anti-crisis energy, essentially the power formed from unity and harmony, which as well happens to be the source of Dr. Manhattan's powers. Having been bestowed supreme amounts of connective energy, she ascended to a form capable of defeating the Darkest Knight, the Batman who laughs, who himself had transformed through siphoning the power of Perpetua, the mother of the multiverse, and literal creator of the Anti-Monitor, as well as the World Forger, capable of fighting them when literally combined. This would blatantly scale her above Parallax and Anti-Monitor, as both beings are shown among those whom Perpetua had fed off of to grant her her nigh-almighty status. So essentially, Wonder Woman was empowered to the level of besting Perpetua-level beings, defeating those who could outperform three Anti-Monitor tier characters. This is one of the most straightforward explanations since Perpetua herself was simply far superior to her sons, the Darkest Knight has her power and then some, and Wonder Woman amped by anti-crisis energy defeated him. 
Many of you were probably expecting Superman at number one, and try as I might to subvert expectations, the Man of Steel still reigns supreme. In the pages of Final Crisis, Superman Beyond number one and two, and this is a doozy, Kal-El emerges with Ultraman, his evil counterpart from a mirror universe, to become a beyond infinitely transcendent thought robot, designed to constantly adapt to any potential or possible threat imaginable. As soon as this cosmic armor is formed, we're shown that in terms of sheer scope alone, he far surpasses the realm of Limbo, a plane described as being above the sphere of the gods where the likes of Darkseid and the new gods reside, being described as being on the furthest edge of reality, and it's barely as big as Superman's palm. This is because he exists on the scope of the Monitor Sphere, the single most fundamental plane of reality on the farthest and highest edge of the DC cosmology. To even exist in this realm would place you above the rest of the list here. However, Cosmic Armor Superman not only does that, but he as well battles Mandrak, an evil being who calls the Monitor Sphere his home, with their clash all but destroying the realm as seen in the background of their fight. This is quite possibly the highest level of power ever put to the page of DC. The only way to potentially place any leaguer above Cass is if we apply the lore of Perpetua having gained all the power resulting from every prior crisis and assert that she'd gained the strength from the event shown within the Monitor Sphere, which would then carry over to the Darkest Night, with his power being stolen from Perpetua, only to be bested by the anti-crisis empowered Wonder Woman. While it is possible to make this argument, the biggest issue I have with it is that Perpetua specifically feeds off of a crisis energy, which is explained to a essentially be power generated to the ends of rebooting DC and the timeline, leading to characters forgetting their respective histories between continuities. Essentially, every retcon made Perpetua more powerful, however, there weren't really any continuity changing ramifications resulting from Cosmic Armor and Mandrax Clash directly. However, if you just want to say that she got the power from every crisis wholesale, Cosmic Armor's fight is in a comic called Final Crisis Superman Beyond, and we do see Mandrax among the list of conflicts empowering Perpetua, so it's not impossible to have the connective energy amped Wonder Woman at the top, it's just not as likely in my opinion. With all that said, I hope you were all surprised and each learned something. I for sure was when researching the topic. Some interesting notes were how overpowered Aquaman was there for a minute, and how Manhunter hasn't really achieved a higher form since 2003. For sure, not what I would have expected going into it. Regardless, thanks for watching. If you'd like to see my ranking of maybe the strongest forms of the Avengers or any other fictional team, let me know down in the comments. Be sure to join my Patreon to support the channel and get access to my Discord. Discord server, over 200 members and growing. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.